Katie. Hi, Claire. Thanks for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, a, welcome. Thank you. What are we looking at? Well, right now, this is a rainbow trout. We have over 100 different kinds of fish here at Santa Monica Seafood. Generally, only about 50 or so per day in the case, but oh. you can always get things on special order. Oh my gosh, I mean, I've only had probably 10 types of fish here. This is a whole fish, so you can see it has everything on it, head, tail, fins. Mm -hmm. This one has been cleaned, so there are no insides there. This fish is beautiful, but I mean, how can you tell that this is a really fresh, ready-to-eat fish? There's a couple ways you can tell. Um, visually, mm -hmm. you want it to have kind of a shiny, glossy look. You don't want it to look dull. Also, you want to check the eyes. Clear eyes are better. You don't want them to have a cloudy effect on the eyes. This one doesn't really have gills because it's already been cleaned, but the gills will be very red. And what determines a fresh fish? Uh, like, When was this caught? How long did it take to transport here? Fish are generally caught, if they're going to be fresh, it's within a few days and shipped. Wow. So this fish is probably not very old. If it's going to be frozen, either on the boat or immediately after, then your transport time might be a little different. But we get mostly fresh here. I can't get over just looking around the case, all the different cuts, all the different types, and you have multiple versions of the same fish from different yes. areas, farm-raised, wild, kind of whatever you need, it's available. Let me just show you a couple different cuts that we have here. I just showed you with the rainbow trout. This is the exact same fish, but it's been butterfly cut. You can see it's missing its head and tail, mm -hmm. and they've also removed the dorsal fin. So if you open it up, all the bones have been taken out. Wow. Now you just have the meat which you can use for stuffing, grilling, anything yeah. you want. For butterflying, it looks like you could do a lot of the same stuff you do with a whole fish. So you could roast that really easy, pan sear it, lots of applications for this. Definitely. The filet is, again, just the one side of the fish. Mm -hmm. This filet is a John Dory, mm -hmm. which you can tell by the skin. Yeah. You can have the skin on or off, depending on your preference, mm -hmm. but it's one side and it's generally boneless. Lastly, we have the steak cut. This is an Alaskan halibut steak. You can see the bone has been left in here, literally just the cross section of the fish. Wow. This is perfect for grilling because it's already very compact, it stays together, it's not going to fall apart. That's great. Some fish are better suited to different cuts and different cooking styles. That's so cool. And this is the kind of thing that you can definitely have your fishmonger do. Yes. So it's sort of like the busher of the sea. You just sea. have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm here today because my sister is not a fish eater at all, and I'm trying to get her to try my fish tacos. So is there, can you direct me in terms of like a mild, easy fish for her to try? I've picked a couple things for you to try so you can get an idea of what she might like. Well, I've never had a fish tasting, so I cannot wait to dig in. This is going to be good. I want you to start with the Alaskan halibut. Mm -hmm. uh, as the name implies, it is from Alaska, from the Alaskan waters. Up there, you know, it's a wild territory, so the fish tend to be bigger, more oil content because the water is colder, mm -hmm. but it also makes for an excellent fish. Yep. Now, this is absolutely delicious, and you can see it's so flaky mm -hmm. and moist and has a really rich flavor. Yes, that's the high oil content for sure. Secondly, you can try the California halibut, so you can compare the two halibuts. Wow. This one is from the Central Coast waters here in the state, and it, as you can see, it is a little bit thinner. Mm -hmm. Thinner filet, a little less oily, mm. but still an excellent flavor, moist, flaky. That is delicious. And so the California and the Alaskan halibut, it's the same fish, they just live in different waters. And they are a slightly different variety, but they both are halibut in the halibut family. And the third one I picked for you to try is the whitefish. And this is actually a domestic fish as well. It's coming from Lake Superior. Oh. So slightly different than the other two, which is the ocean caught. This is a lake mm. fish. Also very sweet, moist. And this one, we generally keep the skin on. Mm. It adds more flavor. And again, it, it helps keep it together when you're cooking because it is a softer fish. This has such a delicate texture yes. compared to the other ones. And it's so interesting tasting these side by side because very similar flavor profiles, mm -hmm. like all the kind of mild, buttery, really tasty, but this one, yeah, it, it's, the flakes are a lot smaller, a lot finer. Yes. And it almost, this one, I like, it uh, melts in your mouth a little bit, whereas these two, they are a little more toothsome, but this, that flavor, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's going to be a tough decision. All very good. I know, it's, it's a good, this is a good, a good hard decision to have. I think because of tacos, and we're going to be having a lot of fun with really bright, mm -hmm. high acid flavors and a little bit of heat, I think I might want to go with one of the halibuts. have them both fresh right now because they are in season. Wild fish has 
very specific cycles that we can harvest from and that we can't. It's almost like when you're hunting or even if you're gardening, you have to wait until the fish is fully mature and ready to harvest. Yes, absolutely. It's exactly the same thing because we are trying to sustain the populations and so we only harvest fresh fish when it's available and able to do so. It's a huge effort that we make here to only harvest things that, that are done in a sustainable way and that have minimal impact on the environment. The fish is not going to get any fresher today, so when I take this home, what should I look out for? How should I keep it in my refrigerator? When should I cook it by? Well, it's very important, obviously, that you keep fish and other seafood very cold. So you want to get it home as soon as possible and into the refrigerator. A lot of people would like to keep it even on ice in the refrigerator in a colander or something so it can drain freely. You generally want to prepare it within a day or two. Otherwise, you're, you sh it's actually recommended that you do freeze it yeah. because freezing will maintain the quality with the flavor as well. I'm going to go with the Alaskan halibut. It grills really well and I'm going to be doing grilled fish for my fish tacos. I think you made a really good choice.